Thanks for checking out the Real Deal EV YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over MCU screen replacement on a Tesla Model S. So we already have taken the instrument cluster or started to take the instrument cluster out on this one. So the left side of the screen is going to look kind of messed up from your normal Tesla, but check out our other video to learn how to take the instrument cluster out. So from here we're going to remove this piece of trim that connects the upper dash to the lower dash panel. Uh, so it's held on by a T20 Torx screw, one screw. I realize this door is in the way, so I'm going to open it up, but I have the camera attached to the door. So once we remove that screw, then that dash is going to be able to completely lift. And we're going to do that by utilizing these air bladders. Um, they have a little pump with a little valve, so I'm shutting the valve. And you're going to push these under, and then you're going to pump up the dash essentially pump up the airbags i like to do this evenly because there is a metal band that goes across there and if you do it uneven it'll end up bending that metal band i just removed the bottom piece of trim piece there um, that's going to help gain access to some screws the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull off that piece of trim that one you're going to put a lot of force into it you're going to feel like you're breaking it but as long as you pull it out straight towards you uh, those clips are made to come out straight towards you. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and remove all five of these um, Torx T20 screws. And then the next ones are going to be in the lower portion of the, this is all holding the glove box in there. So there's going to be three that I'm going to remove on the lower portion of the glove box. Two of them you gain access by opening up the glove box door. Now it's going to come loose. And now it's got some wires on it. I don't like to leave, just leave it hanging. Um, so what you do is you pull out this next piece of trim. Again, be very careful with this one. You don't want it to break. Now I'm gonna put a screw back into this to hold that glove box in place so that way it's not dangling by the wires. The next thing we're gonna do is start getting the instrument cluster out of here. So that way we can start getting the MCU out. So we're going to remove, there's uh, four T30 screws that go around the whole thing. So two on each side, two on the top. And then there's this ground plug. I'm disconnecting the ground plug now. It's just a spade connector. Uh, once the screws are out of there, I like to open up the frunk just in case we have to do the disconnect for the fireman's loop. Other than that, just power down the car as normal. Open up the frunk and Hopefully you don't have to utilize it. The next thing you're gonna do is start pulling the MCU out. And as you can see here, the glove box wiring got disconnected as well as the hazard got disconnected. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to show you how to disconnect these plugs, but I was struggling to try to find an orientation that my hands would actually fit in there and so that the camera could see. So you're just gonna have to uh, use your best pause here if you need to, but um, all I'm doing is taking my thumbnail and pushing in on the plugs. You can also use a small pick. Um, but most of these wires are color coordinated and then they're also just the perfect length and they're, they're laying in there just the perfect way that basically even when it's removed it's almost as if they're plugged into the, the right orientation. These two small black clips um, you can see there's a decent amount of tension on the wire, so you need to push the MCU back. Uh, I struggled with it for a second because I thought the plug clip was closer to the actual plug, but it's actually uh, far back. I don't know if other Model S's it's closer to the front or why I thought it was, but uh, it's on the back here. Uh, I show you right here. There's there's a little locking mechanism that you're going to press with your finger. And here you'll see I released that final one and you can see the MCU fell forward a little bit. I'm sitting in front of it so I caught it. Um, but you want to make sure that you relieve some of that tension otherwise you won't be able to get that clip released. So then you're just going to go through. We did the brown one, the gray one. Uh, now I'm using my fingernail to release these plugs on these black ones, the little clips. I skipped over that one. I decided to get some of these other ones out of the way. So this purple one is a double plug. I try not to pull too much on the actual wire, but you can get away with a little force on them. Now I came back to the 
do this white one and then I'll save the black one there for last. As you can see here, I'm using a plastic pry bar, but I'm just using it to be able to push that clip up for whatever reason, my fingernail wasn't long enough or what, I wasn't able to get it. So all you're trying to do is just release that lock. And now this black one's been giving me quite the struggle. So finally get that out. I'm going to try to blame it on the plug. Now there's two more. You can't really see it because these other wires are in the way, but those other two is a black one and a, a gray one. And then once those two are removed, then you just pull the MCU right out. You're going to take the MCU and find a nice clean spot to put it on. Uh, I have some paper laid out here. You want to be careful because the you don't want to end up scratching up the brushed aluminum. So from this point, I'm going to remove all the screws that hold the plastic housing to the MCU's housing box. So there's a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Um, I'm showing here on the bottom screws, you're going to probably get the glue that's leaked out if that's why you're replacing it on the screw, on the bit, on your hands. So I keep these wet wipes close by so that way I can just kind of wipe and then toss it away. Um, you can see some of the glue is obviously still remaining. It won't clean it all off. It just helps to... Uh, Make it so it doesn't stick to everything. So what you're going to do is take that plastic housing out and set that off to the side. And then you're going to go around and remove all these screws. These are uh, T30 screws. You don't have to move it around and flip it around like this. I'm just trying to move it so you get the view from the camera of all the different screws that you got to take out. So there's a total of two at the top, two at the bottom, and then four on each side. Once those are all out, then you'll basically uh, cut your screws up, make sure you got all your screws. And then from there, you'll be able to open up the MCU. Oh, a little hand wipe there. Oh, coming back for some more. All right, once you open this up, there's gonna be three wires, two ribbons, and then another uh, wire bundle that are gonna connect the screen to the MCU. So what I like to use is a, a small little pick to help remove. This is the uh, this is the ribbon cable that connects the display to the MCU itself. It says a little lock on it, so you kind of want to put your little scribe underneath it there. Lift up on the lock so that way it pulls right out. Now the next thing you're going to do is press down on this locking mechanism so you can pull out this ribbon cable. And then finally, you're gonna slide that ribbon cable back and make sure you look at the orientation of this. This ribbon cable is gonna go underneath of that black plastic piece. Now from this point, you're gonna undo all your clips for all your ribbon cables on the PCBA. This is a printed circuit board. You can start pulling out your ribbon cables. All you're gonna do is just push those little slides back and then kind of maneuver the ribbon cable out. So once those are all out, next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your T6 Torx bit and you're going to start removing all these screws that hold the PCBA to the back of the instrument cluster. Now if this is a Gen 1 screen, you're going to have a metal shield that covers up all these screws in the middle. And so what you want to do is you want to take a screwdriver and lightly pry that metal shield off of there. Um, any of the Gen 1 screens will have this metal shield on there. And so once you remove that metal shield, then you'll gain access to all the screws. So what you're going to do is pull the PCBA, the printed circuit board. We're going to pull that out of there. Set that off to the side. And then you're going to get yourself a T15 Torx bit. You're going to start removing these screws. Now these screws hold on these legs, which attach to the screen, and the screen attaches to the housing. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to pull off all these. So you got a total of these six legs that attach the screen to the housing. And right now I have the other screen off to the side and I'm trying to figure out how I wanted to do it on camera. So what I ended up doing was editing it and 
pulling the other screen out of its housing, bringing it over and putting it in front of the camera here so you can see it. So from this point on, now you're just gonna take your screws and you're gonna uh, put them into the screen and it's gonna fall over and you're gonna do it again. Now, after the first one, I've done this before, but I was just trying to figure out how I could do it best in front of the camera. I know, I know, excuses, I hear you. So what I found on the next couple was it's easiest to just loosen the screws, leave them in the leg, and then just transfer it over to the new ones. Um, so you'll see on this next one, loosen the screw, pull the other one all the way out, and then pull the other one all the way out. Anyways, do it how you see best fit. Um, but it's a little time consuming. If you're using power tools, make sure you don't just uh, send it when you put the screw back in. Take your time. If you get tension, then remove it and then reinstall it so that way you don't cross thread it. But if you've made it this far, I would assume you know how to use your power tools. Now from this point, I've moved the screen so that way we can view it a little bit better. I'm gonna take one of the small screws for the PCBA. I'm gonna place all of our ribbon cables on top of the PCBA. That one was taped down still. I should have uh, probably untaped it before I pulled on it, but I pulled on it straight so that way it wouldn't crinkle the ribbon or anything. So now I'm gonna put in the rest of our small little T6 screws. Now you can do these by hand. I kept it with the power tools, but you put basically zero torque on them because the head of the torques will actually break off uh, before you meet the torques capacity of it. All right, so once all those are in place, I'm gonna remove all the tape from the PCBA. And so now we're gonna slowly push each one of these ribbon cables into the holder on the PCBA. And so what I kind of do is I do a little jog from the left to right and you'll feel it kind of click in place. There's two holders on each side or two little notches on each side of the ribbon cable itself. And so those both have to go inside of that holder. And so I found it best if you just kind of do a little jog left and right and then you slide those white clips forward to lock the PCB or to lock the ribbon cable in place. This one is kind of hard to reach, so I grabbed my little pick. And then what you always want to do is make sure that the gold is kind of straight across, so that way the ribbon's straight in there. So that gold line right there, I'm pointing it out. So all those gold lines are nice and straight. The black plastic is crooked, and that means your ribbon cable is in there crooked. So from here, we're going to remove the foam that you received in our package, putting it right directly on top of the countertop. Then we're gonna bring over the MCU housing with the three cables that need to get hooked up. And so from here, we're gonna hook up the ribbon cables. Now this is gonna go underneath of that black plastic shroud and then you're gonna push the locking mechanism in. On this one, you're gonna slide it in and clip it and then on the last one, you're gonna also slide it in and make sure that you hear that click. So now from this point forward, we're gonna kind of flip the ribbon cables back in there and now turn the MCU housing over. And now what's happening is those legs are catching it. So what I do is I get my tool and just move the leg out of the way so that way the MCU housing sits flush. Now what this may do is make it so the screws aren't accessible so if you look right here in the red, these are the screw holes that you wanna line up. So sometimes you have to lift up a little bit on the housing, which is what I'm doing right here. So you lift up on it just a little bit so those screw heads, see right there. And I just go around and put one in each one of them because so that way they stay loose.
And on the bottom here, I'll put both of them in, tighten them up. And then I go around to all the rest of them, put the rest of it in, tighten it up, put the last one in, tighten it up. And keep working your way around, slide the screen. Just keep in mind that arc screens have a pl plastic cover on them, um, but you don't want to be sliding this around if you yeah, have potential elements that, that could scratch it. it. So once you get all those tightened up, next thing you're going to want to do is get ready to have it accept the plastic housing. So you want to make sure your orientation is correct. Look to make sure that all the fins on the bottom orient for the bottom of the screen, which is the part with the round aluminum shrouding. So it would only let you put it in one way, not like you're going to get the wrong way, but um, now you're going to go around with your T20 Torx bit, put all these screws in as you're working your way around. Now these are just going, these are regular screws going into plastic housings. So you really want to be careful with this. You really don't need to get it over tightened. Thumbs up, man. So now we're inside the car. We have the MCU. I'm laying out the orientation. As I mentioned earlier, they all kind of just naturally sit where they're supposed to go. So you can't see it, but I'm plugging in the gray plug now. Now the black plug, which the two bottom plugs. But as you can see, there's another gray plug right above my hand. But it won't go into it won't go into the wrong one so now I'm trying to figure out which one sits up here next I say all right the gray one looks like it wants to go to this place and the brown one wants to go here what else we got the HDMI this one's the longer one or I don't know what this cable is I don't want to call it HDMI it's not HDMI um, both of those go exactly how they went in there's a longer one and a shorter one Next thing you have that tan cable and all these as you push them in you just want to make you make sure you feel or hear the little click. So those you can both see the, the locking mechanism is both on top. Now on this black one the locking mechanism was on the bottom where if you remember I was struggling with that one earlier. Now all these are going to follow in purple one feel the click blue one I was going to try to demonstrate how they don't go into the wrong locations but that wasn't even the right one anyway so it was a bad demonstration that blue one goes down there and that blue one goes right there they're two different plugs so you won't get them mixed up now you just want to make sure you didn't leave anything in there because there will be some spots that remain open um, so if you really want to be meticulous make sure you count them before you put them all back together so now I'm just getting it set up so I can plug in the glove box, push button, and the hazard push button. And now from this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab the ground strap. As you can see, a better view of the spade plug right there. That's going to go right in the top. And as you can see, the MCU is already powering up. So now we shifted to inside the car. I've already showed you the spade plug that I just pointed out there but there's going to be the four long screws that you're going to put in. Now I'm just doing a quick, making sure that the screen's working or all the touch is working. Cool. Now I blocked your view. Oh, I realized I was doing that. So I guess I moved the camera. Now we're putting the two screws in the top. Now be very careful. You just put this brand new screen in. You don't want to go messing it up. So when you're doing this, Make sure you got the screw head directly on. You don't want to go wobbling around. This one I actually hand threaded in just to make sure that it was going to go in right. So once I get that on, go ahead and get that screw in there. And I kind of set it up where all the screws on the right hand side of the car, divided by the MCU screen, everything on the right hand side of the car, I put right at my feet on the right hand side and everything on the left hand side of the car I put on the left side of the footwell um, in two separate piles so that way I make sure that when I'm putting the screws in there I have all the screws that I need and I even do that right down the middle of the MCU so there's two screws in the top of the MCU so one screw goes to the left footwell one screw goes to the right footwell so that way I know for sure I have all of them that I need so from this point 
Now I'm going to be a little premature because I don't have my new dash panel that I wanted to put in there yet. I thought I could reach it, but it was a little too far away. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in there. Again, that was just holding the glove box in place. So now I'm going to grab the dash piece that I need, which is going to be the wood or carbon fiber or glossy black, whatever your car came with, with the two air vents. So I'll bring that around. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out that one screw. And now from this point, I'm going to take that trim piece. Be very careful not to scratch it, not to nick it, not to ding it. I'm going to get it set up into place. And then once it's kind of close, then you just take a good solid push, push it right in. And then, then you can take your glove box and screw it back in. I'm going to speed this up. So from this point, we're going to go around putting all the screws in. This one, I just had to move the dash panel. Now put the rest of the screws in. So the, there's three on the top and then there's going to be three on the bottom. This one you can open, you can get access to without having the glove box open. The other two, you got to open up the glove box. Don't be going through your customer's paperwork. Leave that alone. Sorry, once you got those in, you're going to take the bottom kick plate trim piece. Make sure you got that oriented the correct way and pop it right in. Now for the bottom part of the dash piece, again, kind of, kind of get the clips lined up and then just send it, but basically push it straight in. Now I'm taking out the air bladder for the dash only to put it right back in because I realized that I got to put the screws in up top. So there's one and two. And so if you're doing the MCU only, then you're actually done at this point. Um, you probably already had access to the screws at the top. So now you just push on the dash until you get it all seated down. The next thing you're going to do, and again, if you're just doing the MCU, then you don't have to mess with this, but uh, I was doing both on this particular car, so I just made it into the video. So now you're going to go ahead and hook up your instrument cluster. By doing this, you have the clip. You basically rotate the clip on, and I have high-resolution images on the instrument cluster purchase page. So if you need those images, go right there. Now all I'm doing is a uh, soft reset. So I'm holding the scroll wheels to do a reset on the car. So that typically will take care of, as you can see, the instrument cluster is booting up now. The MCU, this is the old MCU one car, so it takes a little while for it to slowly boot up. But uh, this is something you gotta do to make the instrument cluster screen work. Now the MCU is booted up. Now you're just gonna place all your vents in here. Put your screw in up top. Put your screw in on the bottom. Now I went ahead and peeled off the protective cover. Now that I won't be touching the screen anymore, I always wait to the last minute. But if you wait too long, then it's kind of hard to gain access to the corner to peel it off. Uh, on the left side vent there, you got two screws on the bottom, one screw at the top. Now you take your instrument cluster surround, put it on there. And this is what I was talking about. If you put this on now and try to remove that plastic cover, it makes it pretty hard to get at the edges. So do it first. Now doing this is easy. You put the four screws in. So now you're going to put the little piece of leather trim piece up there, remove your bladder, and then you're going to go ahead and start pushing down on the dash. Now this video does get cut short because uh, my battery died on my phone and I didn't realize it until I was all done. So if you have any questions, hit us up at realdealev.com. But thank you for watching and enjoy.